Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar organized by Sri. Let me start with the housekeeping role. I would like to request you all of you to switch off the videos and keep your mics mute. I kindly request you to type in your questions in the chat box. We can discuss those after the webinar. Please change your chat settings to all panelists and attendees so your questions can be answered. If you have a very specific question about your situation, please email us on office shree13 at gmail.com. I hope all of you will enjoy this webinar and find it very useful for your clinical practice. The webinar link will be available from uh, 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. to join in. No late attendees will be entertained thereafter. Each attendee should have been attended till the end of the webinar to obtain the certificate for CPD points and the CPD points are strictly adhered to the NCCPD guidelines. This is to improve and maintain the standards of the CPD programs conducted by SHRI. Thanking you for the strict adherence of the CPD regulations and your kind compliance. Without any further delay, I would like to welcome our lecturer for this webinar session, Dr. Nilanda Ratnayaka, Consultant in Community Dentistry, Provincial Directorate of Health Services, Western Province. Over to you, sir. Yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ati Ryan. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, the Society for Health Research and Innovation for inviting me to do this uh, presentation. And uh, in this lecture on main oral diseases and uh, conditions, which may be useful uh, to all the medical officers, um, I will be basically discussing epidemiology and burden of uh, most common oral diseases and uh, the basic diagnosis of uh, these uh, diseases and conditions and uh, identifying early signs and referring them to a dental facility as a medical officer and uh, the ways and means of preventing these major oral diseases. So uh, why oral diseases are important for medical officers? Uh, because most of these dental patients, their first contact may be a medical officer, not the dental surgeon. Uh, they, they go and meet a medical officer, even if it is a dental condition or a, or a, or a or oral condition or a lesion. Then um, uh, in your routine medical examination, you might be examining um, uh, your oral cavity, uh, looking for tongue, then uh, mucous membranes, tonsils. So you will be peeping into the oral cavity in your day-to-day -day clinical examination. And also, uh, sometimes oral diseases are coupled with medical conditions. They are simultaneously occur. So you should have some knowledge on major oral diseases and conditions. Now, um, oral diseases in 2005, uh, WHO, uh, I mean, categorized the major public health problems worldwide. And they have categorized all main oral diseases, namely dental caries, periodontal diseases, oral cancers, OPMDs, uh, oral potentially malignant disorders. I will explain them in, uh, in later slides. And toothwear, mainly dental erosion, dental fluorosis, and oral and maxillofacial trauma, mainly in relation to uh, RTAs. So uh, all these are considered as uh, major pu public health problems worldwide by the WHO. Now, in this presentation, uh, uh, in the interest of time, I will be discussing uh, about dental caries, periodontal disease, OPMD and oral cancers, toothwear, mainly dental erosion, a uh, little bit on dental fluorosis and ba basics and, and, uh, of malocclusions. And in this presentation, uh, I will not be able to discuss this full range of oral mucus, uh, mucosal lesions, except the OPMDs I discussed and the full range of oral malignant and non-malignant tumors, and I will not be discussing in this, this presentation oral and dental infections. That is because most of the questions um, asked in, uh, I mean, prior to the presentation, uh, they were on some of these uh, areas, which I will not be able to cover in this limited time. Now, The Lancet, now the current uh, highest impact medical journal, uh, in its 200 year history for the first time in 2019 um, uh, published an issue on oral health. This is the first time in the two, two thousand, uh, 200 year history and it recognized the importance of uh, oral health and uh, they formed this uh, 
uh, Lancet Commission of o on Oral Health, which investigated into uh, the burden of disease of uh, uh, dental and oral conditions. And uh, they revealed that 35% uh, of the global population is suffering from untreated tooth decay. And uh, I mean, there's no any uh, improvement in that during the past three de decades. So, I mean, uh, when we consider the prevalence of uh, diseases altogether, all the diseases, I mean, number one is untreated tooth decay. It affects 3 billion uh, people in the world, whereas second is migraine, which affects uh, 1 billion. And then again, another 0.75 billion is affected by severe periodontitis, again, an oral condition. And uh, fourth is diabetes and fifth is asthma. So this is the prevalence global prevalence of main five diseases so two major dental diseases are among them then the economic cost economic impact of oral diseases now this is a study uh, i mean uh, done in uh, eu countries and uh, lancet published this in 2019 the economic cost is highest in the eu region for diabetes second for the cardio cardiovascular disease and third is dental diseases is cancer, dementia, respiratory diseases, everything comes after dental diseases. So this means that oral and dental conditions have a significant disease burden as well as significant economic burden. Now, in a country's uh, oral health level is, is measured by national level oral health service. Now, Sri Lanka has performed four national oral health surveys and uh, they have put forward their reports. And uh, these oral health surveys are done according to the methods, uh, uh, I mean, uh, recommended by the World Health Organization. So for dental diseases, they recommend five index age groups to look into the dental diseases and conditions. That is because dental diseases are highly age related. The, the five-year-old children, the, the conditions that uh, five-year-old children are having uh, is entirely different from uh, the conditions that uh, 65 to 74 um, elderly group is having. Now, what are the features of uh, oral diseases? These are the common features of oral, oral diseases. They are common in any population. Dental diseases are very common. And they are lifestyle related. They are some of the other related to your lifestyle, the, your behaviors. Pain is not an initial sign. I mean, when it comes to dentistry, people think that dentistry starts with pain. No, pain is a late sign. Early warning signs are available you know, in, in all major diseases and they are reversible. And uh, dental diseases are preventable with proper habit intervention. And uh, in the late stages of dental diseases, the damage is irreversible. So it's highly important to recognize the dental diseases, diagnose them in the early stages. And dental treatment involves very high cost. I will explain that to you. The dental tissues, very little information, you know all these things, right? Dental, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, tooth is the hardest tissue in the body embedded in the softest tissue on, on, uh, in the body, the mucous membrane. So it's challenging to work in the oral cavity uh, using uh, very high rotary instruments and uh, uh, sensitive material. So, um, uh, I mean, tooth is supported by the gum and then the bone and uh, uh, outermost layer is enamel and the uh, rest is uh, dentin and the uh, pulp chamber which contains nerves and blood vessels. So, I mean, I'll uh, explain to you a little bit about dental plaque, which is a causative factor for two major dental diseases, that is dental caries and periodontal disease. Now, this dental plaque is a thin salivary biofilm which colonized in your, in your, in your uh, mouth with bacteria. Now, this dental plaque is available in anybody's mouth in, in different quantities. If your oral hygiene habits are good, then uh, this presence of the dental plaque is minimal. I mean, if you put a, a toothpick or something in, inside your mouth, uh, in between your tooth and gums, uh, you can pick this uh, dental plaque, whitish, yellowish in color and soft in texture. Now, this formation of plaque is a natural process and uh, uh, the composition is site specific, different from uh, different places, uh, uh, places to places inside the mouth and can be removed by brushing. <clears throat> now, uh, this uh, uh, pla now plaque, uh, the, now this poor dietary and oral hygiene practices uh, induces growth of plaque. 
Uh, now, plaque causes two, as I mentioned, two main diseases, dental caries and gum disease, which are periodontal disease. Correction of habits will definitely prevent uh, these diseases. Uh, so, no uh, further tissue damage will take place. And also, if there's any, any tissue damage, the, that, will, that process will arrest then and there if you maintain uh, proper oral hygiene and uh, 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 remove this uh, dental plaque properly. Um, if there is a tissue loss due to um, this plaque, uh, then there is uh, a treatment is required. Now, dental caries. Now, this is the first disease I am going to uh, uh, describe to you. Dental caries, uh, I mean, uh, most of our population has dental caries. Uh, you all have seen these lesions. The etiology of dental caries is for the dental caries to happen, there should be four things. There should be a susceptible tooth surface. And uh, uh, you need a substrate that is mainly refined carbohydrates, sugar and all that. Then there should be karyogenic bacteria, mainly streptococcus mutants and lactobacilli. And also uh, you need time. I mean, these three things should be should in contact for a significant amount of time for the caries to take place. Then the time factor in dental caries. We advise our patients to reduce consumption of um, sweets, sugary things. Why is that? Uh, and also uh, reduce the quantity as well as the frequency. Um, don't eat uh, sugars frequently. Why is that? Uh, I mean, when you take a sugary diet, uh, the karyogenic bacteria act on these uh, this, this sugars and produce lactic acid. And due to this lactic, lactic acid, the oral pH drops salivary pH starts dropping. When the salivary pH drops below 5.5, which is called the critical pH, the dissolution, dissolution of enamel takes place, the de demineralization of enamel takes place, uh, giving rise to dental caries. And uh, due to the buffering action and all other actions of saliva, this uh, acidity will be reversed. The saliva will be neutralized, then uh, it will be reversed. This is a normal process. So this normal process takes place. So if you, uh, onto your right hand side, this is what happens um, when you uh, take sugar frequently. Your uh, pH level drops below 5.5 and the salivary buffering action uh, tries, tries to recover that. And at the same time, you, you take another sugary diet. So this, uh, this uh, pH level in the saliva uh, will be maintained below 5.5 all the time so that uh, the environment is very much favorable to dental caries and patients end up with dental caries. So this is purely due to the lactic acid produced by karyogenic bacteria after acting on the refined carbohydrates. So what are the features of dental caries? Dental caries is a multifactorial condition like diabetes. It is, a, I mean, its uh, severity and its occurrence will be determined by several factors. There are dietary factors, social factors, economic factors, behavioral factors, salivary factors. So it is, it is a, a, a disease like diabetes, which has multiple factors. And dental caries has a bacterial transmission. What is this? This knowledge was, the, I mean, not, uh, I mean, not in the cards uh, about 15 years back. This knowledge is relatively new. Uh, I mean, babies are born. Uh, without karyogenic bacteria in their flora. And uh, according to these findings, uh, I mean, if the mother has untreated caries, so that uh, the karyogenic bacteria count in their flora is high, so um, this uh, bacteria uh, will be transmitted to baby during their first three years of life. So this is, this is the theory. So um, how do you karyogenic bacteria transfer into the baby's mouth? This happens during the first three years of life of the baby uh, from saliva rich karyogenic bacteria. From mother, okay, not, not necessarily the mother, maybe the caregiver, maybe the, maybe the uh, caregiver who is handling the baby. Right? How this happens? By close association and hugging. Testing prepared meals. There's a habit of testing prepared meals and putting the same spoon into the meal by mothers and caregivers. Blowing on the baby's food can uh, introduce loads of uh, karyogenic bacteria to the food, sharing utensils with the siblings, and then from the siblings also, 
um, shared feeding bottles, spoons, specifiers, utensils, this uh, bacteria can be transmitted from one sibling to the other. Now, with this knowledge of um, transmissible nature, um, uh, Director General of Health Services in 2009 published a circular, um, I mean, uh, incorporating this knowledge and uh, adding this component into uh, the family health program of the Family Health Bureau. Uh, the oral health care during pregnancy became a, became a topic in the family health program uh, uh, of the Family Health Bureau. So oral health care is, uh, of the pregnant mothers is give uh, given due recognition. Uh, aiming uh, uh, generation of uh, caries, free, uh, caries free kids. Then dental caries, the third feature is dental caries once occurred, once cavitated it is irreversible. Now see the cavitation has taken place, these cavities uh, need feelings but uh, the disease has occurred, the, the, these aren't, uh, this, this can't be reversed. But in early stages, uh, caries is not like this, it's just a white spot lesion close to the gum margin. Now, if you diagnose dental caries at this, this stage, which are white spot lesion, not cavitated like earlier lesion, now these uh, lesions are totally reversible. How are we going to reverse this? By fluoride therapy. In our clinics, this is uh, application of fluoride varnish. Uh, fluoride gels are there with uh, fluoride therapy. You can reverse these white spot lesions uh, to its original position. So, uh, dental caries in its initial stages, white spot lesion stages, uh, can be reversed. What is the other feature of uh, dental caries? Dental caries can be modified by fluorides. What is the action of fluorides? We recommend a fluoridated toothpaste to our patients. Why, what is the action of fluoride? Um, fluoride has two actions. One action is systemic action. For ac systemic action to take place, uh, you have to take fluoride, uh, I mean, you have to ingest fluoride during the first eight years of uh, life in optimum quantities, not in, not in uh, high quantities, optimum required quantities. Then there is a topical action uh, of fluoride. For to topical action to take place, uh, uh, fluoride should be inside the mouth. This topical action can be obtained at any stage of life. Now, this topical action can be again the remineralization action oh, and there is an antibacterial action of fluoride inside the mouth against karyogenic bacteria. Now, in the healthy tooth surface, um, I mean, there is a balance between the tooth and the outer environment that is saliva. Tooth is bathing with saliva all the time. So, all the time, this cal calcium phosphate and hydroxyl ions in the tooth enamel uh, really will be released to the saliva and once saliva is saturated, again it is redeposited. Re this is called demineralization and remineralization. In a healthy mouth, this is, this is in a kind of a balance. What happens when lactic acid is produced uh, by karyogenic bacteria? When you do not brush properly, this balance is lost. So, this is how it happens kind of uh, elaboration. Uh, in your enamel, it is calcium hydroxyapatite the, the the composition of the enamel. Uh, once this um, uh, acid attack is there, all these calcium ions, phosphate ions and hydroxyl ions will be released um, uh, to the uh, saliva, so, uh, salivary outer environment. So the tooth decay takes place. So at this point, if you can give calcium ions and phosphate ions and uh, instead of hydroxyl ions fluorides, then this remineralization can be induced. So the enamel is redeposited with calcium fluoroapatite, which is more denser and more acid, acid resistant than calcium hydroxyapatite, the original enamel. So that's why we, uh, we recommend fluoridated toothpaste, which contains all these, uh, all these ions, calcium, phosphate, and particularly fluoride, so that uh, the, the um, uh, caries action will be reversed. So this is the comparison of calcium hydroxyapatite and calcium fluoroapatite. The, the, the fluoroapatite is in crystal form, which is densely packed and more acid resistant. So this is the basis of recommending uh, fluoride, fluoridated toothpaste and uh, using fluoride in our clinical practice. Then the fifth feature of dental caries is caries is modified by salivary factors such as salivary flow rate and buffering capacity. If your salivary buffering capacity is good, 
then uh, your your caries um, anti caries activity is good and caries also always has an episodic progression not a constant or continuous process caries is me measured in population using an index called dmft decayed missed and filled to fill teeth we calculate the decayed missed and filled teeth in one person and uh, we we sum them up and uh, this gives a caries experience of uh, of an individual how many number of teeth are decayed how many number of teeth are missed due to caries and how many are filled due to caries so if a person has three teeth uh, which are undergone i mean uh, dental caries his dmft is three likewise for a population what we do is we add up all the uh, dmft values of the population and divided by the number of subjects in the population to get the population dmft so this is this is these are few figures from uh, the national oral health survey uh, uh, surveys we conducted uh, in uh, 83 84 95 94 95 2002 2003 and 2015 16 the latest one so this has given the uh, caries prevalence of different age groups throughout this period and the uh, dmft the caries experience of individuals uh, to explain easily, I will take only the 12 year old uh, old group. Now, this is the uh, figures for 12 year old group. You, you can see that during this period, the prevalence of dental caries has drastically declined. It was 67% uh, in 83-84 and uh, it was 30.4% in 2015-16. And DMFT, the caries experience, the average number of teeth decayed, uh, number of teeth decayed in a mouth. Uh, which was 1.9 in 1983-84 has reduced uh, down only to 0.6 in 2015-16. So um, this is the caries map of the world. The lighter the color, uh, low caries. So according to this, now Sri Lanka is considered a low dental caries uh, country, which is comparable to most of the European countries and better than some of the developed countries like Canada, USA, Australia and New Zealand. So how we achieve this? Is it because uh, we restricted the consumption of sugar? Now, this is the sugar consumption of selected countries in the CRO region and uh, West Pacific region. CRO is Southeast Asian region. And uh, this green is CRO, uh, blue is West Pacific. Now, you all can see that uh, sugar consumption, Sri Lanka is only second to Thailand. Average Sri Lankan consumes 34 kilos of uh, sugar per person per year, um, whereas the WHO recommendation is this red line, 10 kilograms of sugar per person per year. So Sri Lanka is, can be considered as a high sugar consuming nation. So we, we have not achieved a, a good sugar reduction. This factor has been substantiated by the fact that uh, uh, the latest National Oral Health Survey uh, shows that these confectionaries which contain sugar like biscuits, buns and cakes, most of the population, uh, all age groups consume them on an everyday basis. So what is the reason then for this reduction of um, uh, dental caries in our population? The main reason is use of fluoridated toothpaste during the past two, three decades. Now, in all age groups, except the elderly group, more than 75% are use of the population are using fluoridated toothpaste. So, I mean, it's our duty to encourage fluoridated toothpaste. This uh, advantage of fluoride toothpaste is recognized in the National Oral Health Survey report and also the World, World Health Organization CRO region strategy has, uh, has mentioned that uh, fluoride is a base, access to safe levels of fluoride is a basic human right. So, it's our duty uh, to promote fluoride. So, what can we uh, do as medical officers to prevent dental caries in our patients? I mean, if you all can diagnose the white spot lesions I mentioned to you, at their white spot early stages, uh, that carious lesions can be reversed totally. So uh, if you peep into patient's mouth to uh, look for the tongue or tonsils, just look around teeth. If you notice any white spot lesions, ask the patients to uh, go and meet. Then advise patients on fluoridated toothpaste. You know how effective fluoride toothpaste is now and low sugar diet, both frequency and quantity. You know how uh, the pH drops if you take sugary diet frequently. And twice daily brushing is important. Next disease entities is periodontal disease. Now, what are periodontal disease? 
Now, periodontal uh, uh, periodontium is examined using this probe, called periodontal probe, which has some calibrations. So, uh, this uh, periodontium is a supporting structure. Uh, so, th this has a natural pocket. Normal pocket is around three millimeter. This is in health. But in disease, what happens is this pocket uh, will become deep. Now, the, uh, more than five millimeters, maybe, right? Due to in, that is due to inflammation. What is the reason for this inflammation? It is dental plaque, which I explain, explained to you, right? So initially, the soft tissue loss, then even the bone loss can take place, resulting in uh, this type of a, uh, I mean, the tooth loses its support, right? Uh, now, what are the microorganisms which are responsible for this uh, periodontal disease? Not like uh, this lactobacilli and streptococci uh, uh, for dental caries. There are three main uh, uh, bacteria, Porphyromonas gingivalis, Treponema denticola, and Actinobacillus actinomycetem comitans. These are the three main bacteria which causes um, periodontal disease. So, this is the healthy gingiva. Now, what happens initially? When plaque accumulates and uh, your brushing is poor, the initial stages of gum disease uh, appears, which is gingivitis. On the on the gum, you get sign, uh, all signs of inflammation, redness, this uh, uh, and all all bleeding and all that, right? And the severe form is peri uh, periodontitis, where you get tissue loss. So if you can diagnose your patients at this gingivitis stage, inflamed gingiva and uh, refer them to a dental facility, it, uh, I mean, uh, progressing it into the periodontitis, the severe condition can be prevented by proper dental, att dental uh, attention. The first sign in gum disease is bleeding. This is, this is after periodontal probing. Uh, with slight probing, if the gum bleeds, you are in the first stage of, uh, uh, of gum disease, right? If you notice any bleeding when you're brushing, you are in the first stage of gum disease. Right. So plaque, how <clears throat> what <clears throat> how the plaque can be visualized? <clears throat> if the plaque is white in color, it needs to be disclosed using a disclosing solution or disclosing tablet. Now this is disclosing solution is used. Now he, these are the areas where plaque is accumulated. Right. If this plaque is left without removing, without brushing properly. Uh, it reacts with uh, calcium in saliva and forms uh, this uh, calculus, which cannot be removed by a toothbrush. You need to attend to a dental facility and get a scaling done to remove all these calculus. So when calculus develops, it, 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 it recedes all this gum and also it affects the heart tissue. Now see the severe forms of periodontitis, periodontal disease, right? Now, uh, very poor oral hygiene, a lot of uh, calculus. And see in this uh, this patient, um, uh, once the calculus is removed, see the support support for the tooth is minimal. I mean, they can they can fall off. Right. So uh, periodontal diseases are devastating. But the thing is that if you can diagnose a very early stage where only the bleeding is there, uh, it can be reversed with proper dental care. So what are the uh, uh, risk factors for periodontal disease? Um, these factors are mainly poor oral hygiene and smoking and diabetes. If the patient is diabetic and having a very poor oral hygiene, then it, uh, the, the diabetes is contributory. And if, uh, if a patient is smoking, again, it is contributory. Uh, if the patient is uh, uh, having poor oral hygiene. This does not move, it seems. All right, right. So, uh, brushing twice daily, uh, how, what proportion of population do you think uh, brush twice daily in our country? Now, this is the figures from the latest National Oral Health Survey. Now, what we can see is that only half, nearly 50% of our population brushes twice daily. That means half of our population is not, not brushing teeth at night. So, remove the plaque properly, twice daily brushing is essential. So, it's your duty to encourage your patients to brush twice daily uh, to keep your mouth healthy, right? Then um, this is the way of expressing a, a level of periodontal disease in a population, percentage of healthy grounds, prevalence of healthy gums. Now see, during the past few decades, 
uh, we have we are, we are improved in that aspect prevalence of healthy gums in 12 year olds from 12 uh, 12% we have improved improved up to 55% 55% of our population is having healthy gums that means only 45% still again 45% is having unhealthy gums so we have something to achieve in this aspect so that is about periodontal disease so um, so what can we do as medical officers right advise your patients on importance of maintenance of oral hygiene twice daily brushing and it's your duty to, uh, to diagnose if you peep into the oral cavity to see mucosa or tonsils or tongue uh, to check for anemia um, if you see initial signs of gingivitis gingival inflammation direct that patient refer that patient to a dental surgeon to get proper dental care uh, to prevent it to progressing into severe form which is called periodontitis oral cancers right oral cancers um, i mean it's devastating because uh, i mean the treatment of oral cancer being a cancer in the head and neck region affects the patient a lot uh, reduces the quality of life uh, pretty much i mean uh, with uh, after the surgery for oral cancers patients are disfigured all right so i mean it's a it's a it's a it's a disaster and um, the burden of oral cancer incidence of the, uh, the oral cancer every day five new cases of oral cancers are diagnosed on top of that every day three people die due to oral cancers and uh, oral cancers are prominent among males and it's the number one cancer among males in sri lanka All right so this is the age standardized incidence rates uh, during the uh, past several years so you all can see i mean um, although there are dips overall uh, uh, among males oral cancers are increased right uh, this is red these females among males there's a, there's an increase and uh, this is the age uh, age specific rates now you all can see this is uh, i mean chances of getting oral cancers increases after the age of above 40 and um, i mean peaks around 65 to 69 so oral cancers can be considered as a disease of uh, um, adults and elderly so um, in sri lanka what is the risk factor 85% uh, of oral cancers in sri lanka are due to um, um, beetle quid chewing uh, it says the population attributable risk that means if uh, the uh, habit of beetle quid chewing is taken away from our population 85% of our oral cancers can be can be prevented so what are the carcinogenic substances um, in this um, beetle quid now beetle leaf do, uh, do you have uh, carcinogens in beetle leaf no beetle leaf does not have any car carcinogens um, tobacco yes there are 28 known carcinogens in tobacco Aricanut? yes but we came to know relatively recently maybe uh, two decades back aricanut has three known carcinogens what about slake lime slake lime per se does not have any carcinogen but slake lime increases the permeability of mucous membranes and allows all these carcinogenic materials to seep into the tissues so beetle quid chewing prevalence is fairly high in el, uh, el, uh, elderly groups in Sri Lanka. Now see among males, uh, nearly 30% of our uh, elderly group in Sri Lanka, nearly 30% uh, chew beetle on everyday basis. And uh, also the females, nearly 25% uh, uh, of our elderly groups. That means uh, uh, one out of every, every four are elderly will be chewing beetle everyday basis which is a, a, a very much a, a significant habit. Now, this is the map of Arikanat chewers in the world. This is in this region, South Asian region and um, the Pacific, uh, Asia Pacific region, right? And few countries in the map, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the, in Africa, right? Now, this is the countries with, with high incidence and mortality uh, of oral cancers. You all can see that uh, this map is overlapping. So it shows that, um, I mean, um, tobacco uh, and also this uh, aricanut particularly has something to do with this uh, oral cancers. So with this new knowledge of uh, uh, carcinogens in aricanut, uh, National Cancer Control Program came out with, uh, with this uh, poster. 
um work pilika i think right and uh, i mean you also it's uh, you can educate your your patients on this uh, i mean if you recognize that your patients are beetle chewing uh, chewing beetle um, uh, you can educate on the harmful effects of this uh, aricanat then smokeless tobacco i mean uh, there's a habit of uh, chewing raw tobacco and sniffing this uh, tobacco powder in the, in small groups of population this again contributed now this is the new menace now this um, uh, commercial preparations of tobacco and aricanat uh, they are from neighboring countries like india bangladesh pakistan maldives right uh, they are illegal in uh, sri lanka according to the nata gazette notification by 2016 but there's a black market i mean uh, this is uh, 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 cons uh, confiscated uh, consignment uh, by the uh, sri lanka um, uh, customs now they are coming different names pan parag and gutka and all that uh, i mean uh, uh, significant proportion of uh, these adolescents particularly school children uh, using this and this is, and uh, this is a sri lankan product sri lankan variant of this commercial preparations panipuak um, i mean selling illegally uh, but it is available in the market you can uh, buy it from i mean under the shelf you can buy it right so risk factors for uh, what are opmds then opmds are the preform oral potentially malignant disorders the preform of oral cancer if you can diagnose uh, opmd before it uh, transform into a, a malignancy oral cancer um, i mean you can do a lot of things on this uh, oral potentially malignant disorder so now we know the risk factors tobacco aricanat alcohol and hpv infections particularly in relation to oral sex habits in the west now hpv infection has recognized as a uh, risk factor for oral cancers and poor oral hygiene so these are the main oral potentially malignant disorders which we see leukoplakia submucous fibrosis and erythro erythroplakia they are the main ones others are very rare now <clears throat> now these are these 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 are the main uh, opmds <clears throat> white patches and red patches if you notice any white patches or red patches on the oral mucosa of your patients it's your duty uh, to refer them to a dental dental facility this is leukoplakia white patch pure white this is erythroplakia the red patch and this is a mixture of red and white which is erythroleukoplakia then <clears throat> this this these uh, can be presented in in, in different forms I mean, I mean, different um, levels. So, whenever there is a doubt, um, it's better to refer uh, to a dental facility. So, if there's any need for a biopsy, uh, the dental surgeon will uh, take a biopsy. Then, this is the recent, um, uh, recently increasing OPMD, oral submucous fibrosis. This is mainly uh, due to this aricanat consumption. Uh, initial stages, uh, the, the depopulation of tongue takes place. Then, um, then uh, this blanching of mucous membrane and also things uh, will be will be visible. Then burning sen sensation in the mucous membrane. And in the late stages, uh, you get fibrous bands in the buccal mucosa. If you uh, if you put a gloved finger inside the buccal mucosa, you can feel the fibrous bands. And these fibrous bands restricts op mouth opening, and this patient suffering from oral submucous fibrosis can't open mouth even to eat something. Very limited mouth opening. So I mean, this should be attended. If you notice any patient, uh, I mean, uh, who is having a restricted mouth opening, just uh, check uh, the the uh, buccal mucosa using a gloved finger to check if there are any uh, fibrous bands. This is the incidence of uh, oral cancer, and this is the mortality due to oral cancer. You all can see um, our country, Sri Lanka, is in the red region. So, I mean, oral cancer is a problem for all of us uh, as medical dental professionals in Sri Lanka. <clears throat> so, so uh, main thing is that most of these uh, oral cancers presented to our facilities at stage three. We can't do anything. So, we trained uh, primary healthcare workers, mainly midwives. Uh, to um, to educate patients on oral self examination self examination of mouths go in front of a mirror once a month uh, and check all the mucous membranes in front uh, by 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 yourself right so this can be encouraged 
and also the national cancer program uh, cancer control program put forward this guideline uh, national guideline on opmd for medical and dental officers so this uh, guideline is available in the website of the nccp now the fourth uh, latest edition is uh, we are in the process of editing it it will be available soon so what a medical officer can do to prevent oral cancers in sri lanka if you notice any red white or red or white mixed lesion in the mu mucous membrane refer to a dental facility if necessary they will take a biopsy encourage and education your patients on self mouth examination and um, habit intervention on your patients tobacco arecanut alcohol improve oral hygiene you can advise your patients because you might be advising your patients on medical conditions also the same things maybe diabetes heart disease anything next entity is uh, tooth wear there are three main types of uh, tooth wear attrition abrasion attrition is mainly uh, due to uh, wrong occlusion i mean uh, touching uh, teeth eat each other abrasion is mainly due to uh, vigorous brushing you all can see the picture right you know how it happens vigorous brushing and the uh, up and coming thing is this dental erosion dental erosion is progressive irreversible loss of dental enamel particularly not involving bacteria now in in caries it is due to bacteria dental heart tissue get dissolved and cavities are formed that is due to bacteria this is this dental erosion is not due to bacteria this is uh, direct acid introduced into the oral cavity how can it happen due to acidic diet or gastric regurgitation so uh, in a research among 17 year old school children in kalambu district uh, researchers found that 22 percent of uh, school children in kalambu district having initial stages of dental erosion in their teeth so uh, due to their i mean uh, dietary practices revealed in the in the questionnaire the authors analyzed uh, different brands of carbonated beverages available in the market to see that their ph is really low and they are highly acidic all of them are the ph below three uh, in different brands and um, authors compare the uh, ph of different brands uh, with now this is this is the brand called coca cola and uh, authors um, compared the sri lankan figure acidity, acidity figure with the other reported uh, figures in in uh, different parts of the world to see that sri lankan made coca cola is the most acidic and it is same for the fanta brand fanta uh, sri lankan made fanta compared to other reported uh, ph figures is more acidic uh, and um, i mean it's more harmful so uh, as medical and dental practitioners what we can advise our patients is to refrain from all these carbonated beverages which are highly acidic not only teeth you know the the, the damage to other tissues in the body because of this high acidity um, so uh, this is incorporated into the canteen policy of schools in the uh, education ministry after this research so um, um, i mean these carbonated beverages cannot, cannot be sold in school canteens anymore then dental little bit on dental fluorosis right dental fluorosis is an animal defect due to excessive intake of uh, fluorides during the developmental stage i told you that uh, if you take optimum quantities of uh, fluorides uh, ingest fluoride uh, during the first eight years of life that is beneficial your teeth will become strong enamel will become strong but um, if you in, uh, uh, get high amounts of fluoride during the first year years of life you will end up with this condition disfiguring condition called dental fluorosis right this is endemic to certain areas of the world due to the high flu high fluoride levels in the groundwater now this is how the fluoride concentration works if the concentration in water consuming water is less than 0.5 milli milligrams per liter um, you will get dental caries that is uh, your fluoride level in water is not sufficient to keep the dentition healthy i mean in these populations water fluoridation is required that is what uh, the western countries do do they fluoridate their water supplies to get the optimum level now if the water fluoride level is between 0.5 to 1.5 milligrams per liter that water will prevent dental caries but above this level there's a chance of getting all these diseases initially dental fluorosis and later skeletal fluorosis crippling and all that what is the skeletal fluorosis it's a disfiguring condition again um, these the all these people are disabled this is andhra pradesh india 
where groundwater chloride level is very high. So, I mean, the entire village is uh, having uh, skeletal fluorosis, right? So, I mean, this type of situation is not there in Sri Lanka, but in the dry zone of Sri Lanka, there's a, there, there are pockets where the fluoride groundwater fluoride level is high. So, we notice these dental fluorosis patients in these areas, like some parts of Anuradhapur district, uh, Kakirava and all that, then Polonnaruwa district, Ampara district and Hambantur district, some part of uh, uh, Monoragalu district also. So, I mean, uh, to the natural eye, fluorosis, mild fluorosis looks like this. White spots dispersed everywhere like. And severe form is, I mean, it's uh, highly characteristic. Brownish uh, teeth, highly disfiguring, right? So, um, if you see any, any patient like this, you can refer them. Now, the prevalence is high in end fluoride endemic areas, going up to 78%, uh, according to the research, right? <clears throat> then uh, how to prevent this uh, fluoride avoid high fluoride drinking water sources now because of the ckdu and not now there's a slight uh, re reduction in uh, fluoride because they now they use uh, different water sources like bottled water you can do rainwater harvesting or switch to bottled water now little bit on malocclusion <clears throat> malocclusion um, is uh, common in Sri Lanka, particularly in, in, in developing children, 15% of 12 year olds in Sri Lanka have severe malocclusion. So, this is a significant number, right? So, um, 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 what can you all do if you see a malocclusion? Now, these are the two, I mean, these figures shows two main types of disease uh, called class 2 malocclusion, where the upper arch is uh, significantly more away from the lower arch. So the gap is more, right? So, so this need treatment. This is the other type, class three malocclusion, where the lower arch is in front of the upper arch. Both these conditions need treatment and orthodontic treatment are costly. Now, um, uh, the, on top of that, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, government uh, dental uh, service provides all the treatment, even uh, this orthodontic treatment, rounds, bridges, restorative treatment, everything free of charge at the expense of the state. Therefore, um, I mean, if you uh, uh, diagnose, if you see any uh, malocclusions in your children in the early stages, if you can refer them, um, it can be treated. So why we should prevent dental diseases, right? Why we should prevent them? May, may all major dental diseases are habit related. What are these habits? I mean, um, improper brushing, lack of oral hygiene, lack of use of um, uh, fluoridated toothpaste, then this uh, tobacco chewing, uh, alcohol, arecanut chewing, uh, smoking, all are habit related. Therefore, if you can do habit interve intervention properly, all these major dental diseases could be prevented. And the other thing why we should prevent dental diseases, dental treatment involves very high cost to the state, to the government, right? So it's the expense of uh, people's, I mean, public money. Therefore, uh, whenever we can prevent dental diseases, we should take all the steps, right? Then production of dental professional is cost costly. I mean, this is the uh, per capita current cost for an undergraduate uh, by the UGC. In the, uh, this figure is for 2020. Now you all can see to produce a uh, dental graduate per year, the cost is around 1.7 million. And for the entire course, it is 8.6 million to produce a dental, dental surgeon. Whereas to produce a medical officer per year, it is 836,000. For the entire course, uh, it is uh, 4 million, which is half less than producing a dental surgeon. And for a, uh, to produce an engineer, engineering graduate, it is, I mean, to produce a dental graduate, uh, it takes uh, four shares of, um, um, uh, four times more for producing an engineering, engineering graduate. So, uh, I mean, it's costly. I mean, uh, training is costly because uh, uh, training uh, dental graduates involves a lot of machinery, equipment, and very expensive material. So, I mean, uh, whenever we can prevent dental diseases, uh, we should prevent them. So, your take-home take message is, what can I do 
to my patient as a medical officer right habit intervention whenever you see i mean you might be doing this habit intervention in your day-to-day -day practice because you come across um, patients with uh, serious smoking with asthma and all that diabetic patients right you, uh, i mean uh, whatever the thing uh, that you can do uh, to uh, combat these habits tobacco smoking tobacco chewing in the form of uh, uh, i mean beetle chewing tobacco and arecanut alcohol um, sugar reduction, you might be advising your patients on healthy diet, uh, uh, particularly diabetic patients, and to avoid acidic diet, particularly these carbonated beverages, then all the time use fluoridated toothpaste, then uh, twice daily brushing, right? Only half of our population is brushing twice daily, half of our population is not, not brushing the teeth at night, then, then educate and encourage on self-mouth examination, which is a very effective way of uh, uh, diagnosing early stages of oral cancer, particularly those who are indulged in these habits. Uh, I mean, educate them to how to do it. I mean, all these steps are there in the National Cancer Control Program website, the South Mouth Examination. Uh, so, I mean, um, this can be encouraged uh, on your patients. Diagnosis of early warning signs of main oral diseases and referral for dental care. Now, if you can diagnose these things, you can support the dental profession to reduce more than 75% of our dental uh, dental patients, right? If you can diagnose the early dental caries, the white spot lesions in your patients, right? Even, even the members of your family, this may be useful, just go in front of mirror and see whether there are any initial white spot lesions, right? And then early stage of gum disease, gum inflammation, still no tissue loss. So if you diagnose gingivitis at this stage, your gum and bone can be prevented from uh, getting distracted due to severe periodontitis. And red, white and red, white mixed lesions. Any suspicious lesion you see in the oral cavity, I recommend to refer to a dental surgeon uh, for, for any further investigation. And malocclusions if you come across um, any malocclusions in your in your i mean uh, the children you treat adolescents you treat um, ask them to go and see a dental surgeon so that they see whether there's any requirement for an orthodontic treatment so thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, for the society for health research and innovation Thank you, sir. And uh, there are some questions we received from the audience. And uh, now we'll start with the Q&A session. And the first question is, uh, what are the common dental problems in school children and how to prevent dental caries in children? The main, as I, as I mentioned to you, um, the main uh, dental problem among school children is dental caries. So, uh, I mean, this is the uh, main cause of uh, morbidity among school children we encounter uh, during the school medical inspections. So uh, uh, that is number one, dental caries. So uh, that's why this uh, school dental service is there in Sri Lanka. This was established in 1950s and still it's, um, I mean, it's developed uh, to an uh, extent that uh, all uh, uh, vulnerable children are screened for the dental caries and uh, they are given uh, treatment. But still, uh, there are significant proportion uh, having untreated dental caries. So number one is dental caries. The other one is malocclusions. Again, malocclusions still in Sri Lanka. Uh, orthodontic treatment can be obtained from uh, from government facilities. Uh, you you may have to uh, wait in a waiting list for a for a uh, for a little time. But still um, uh, can and a little bit of uh, gum disease, but not very common among children. In children, the main one is dental caries, and uh, then uh, uh, gum disease, periodontal disease. Thank you, sir. And next one is a uh, three-part question. Uh, how can we select a good toothpaste? And do you recommend fluoride-containing toothpaste for everybody? The last part is, is fluoride-containing toothpaste really capable of repairing microdental erosions? Yeah. And now, uh, fluoride toothpaste, uh, uh, to get the therapeutic effect, beneficial effect, uh, fluoride toothpaste should contain 1000 to 1500 parts per million fluoride in that. So um, 
in sri lanka uh, this uh, fluoride toothpaste is regulated by the specification by the sri lanka standards institute so whatever the tooth, uh, fluoridated toothpaste available in the market is of this uh, standard and um, so uh, and uh, um, there are some myths regarding this fluoride toothpaste i mean the, everywhere in the world there is uh, an anti fluoride campaign that is how it called anti fluoride campaign it came in the west particularly when the government uh, st uh, started to uh, 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 fluoridating their water supplies. There was a group who objected that, saying that it's kind of a forced medication. But, uh, I mean, the public health benefit of flu water fluoridation is evident in all the Western countries that uh, their, their, their um, um, I mean, dental caries levels are very low. Now, in countries like Sri Lanka, where the central water supply is not common to everywhere in the country, the best mode uh, compared to community water fluoridation to deliver fluoride to patients is, is uh, uh, fluoride toothpaste. And uh, fluoride toothpaste is safe. Now, this uh, anti-fluoride campaign only, uh, I mean, uh, spread all these rumors that fluoride toothpaste are toxic. They are not toxic. The, the fluoride in the toothpaste is in the optimum level that even if a child swallows a bit of a fluoride toothpaste, that will not uh, make them toxic. Right? So, um, it is safe for any, any population group. Some say that it is, it is using fluoride, fluoridated toothpaste is uh, harmful for pregnant mothers, which is not so. Uh, pregnant mothers are they are they are adults and uh, they have a control and they don't solo to fluoridated toothpaste. If you solo fluoridated toothpaste only, there's a chance of ingestion. I mean, there's a chance of absorption into the blood. Um, but even if um, um, the fluoride toothpaste is swallowed, it is not. Uh, it will not uh, cross the blood, blood brain. Uh, I mean, uh, this uh, placental barrier. So uh, there's no harm. And uh, some says that uh, fluoride toothpaste is um, harmful for those who are living with high ground fluoride levels. Now, this is again uh, should be analyzed scientifically. Uh, those people who are living in, <coughs> in high ground fluoride levels, they are they got intoxicated from uh, fluoride during the first eight years of life. After that, uh, to protect their teeth, they can use the fluoridated toothpaste until such time that they do not swallow fluoridated toothpaste. So, fluoridated toothpaste is safe for any 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 group. Uh, and um, there's one other thing that I have to say regarding this fluoridated toothpaste. I told you that to get the maximum therapeutic benefit of fluoridated toothpaste, um, it should have a fluoride uh, 1000 to 1500 ppm. But uh, now there are some kinds of toothpaste available in the supermarkets and all called children's toothpaste, which has less than 500 ppm. Uh, uh, fluoride which are not effective so even for children uh, don't buy these uh, uh, types called children's toothpaste use the same toothpaste you use the adult toothpaste in uh, in uh, recommended quantities for children a very small amount a pea sized amount and if the child is below three years it's just a smear layer just you get the, the uh, toothpaste tube and touch on the um, touch on the brush bristles and give it to the child thank you sir and uh, next one is what are the complications of multiple uh, dental extractions then this is again a bit uh, now uh, people think that i mean extracting upper teeth will affect all these eyes and all that which is not so right if i mean due to some reason or the other if dental extractions are indicated they should be done right there are a few complications of dental extractions which, which can be tackled by a by, by a good surgical team all right but uh, i mean um, multiple extractions if they are indicated there's no harm in doing uh, multiple extractions um, next one is uh, is flossing essential if so how does it apply in sri lankan context yeah dental flossing this is very i mean it's a part of life in the west actually flossing is not practiced in sri lanka flossing i mean you when you brush your teeth using a toothbrush there are certain parts in the in the mouth which cannot be reached by the toothbrush, particularly the interdental region. So the objective of flossing teeth is to clean the interdental region. Uh, so in the West, I mean, it's like brushing. Everyday people use floss, right? 
but in sri lanka um, this is not a practice but i i think that i mean floss is not very expensive um, you can availability in in, in bulks in meters large quantities so that if you buy it in bulk it's not not very expensive um, there's a way of doing flossing um, uh, if you go go to uh, the youtube uh, there there are different clips which explains uh, um, the use of floss flossing is highly recommended which is not a practice in sri lanka but uh, to remove all these interdental plaque accumulated floss is one of the best methods um, the next one is is there any pregnancy related oral conditions now in pregnancy as i told you in the oral health context the most important thing during the pregnancy is if the mother is having uh, dental caries that means she has a lot of uh, cariogenic bacteria then there is a chance that the same flora will be trans transmitted into uh, the newborn child so in that context if there is dental caries that should be attended in pregnant mothers that's why this uh, oral health component is incorporated into the family health program of the family health bureau and pregnant mothers are give, uh, given a, a priority in all our dental clinics right in addition to that due to pregnancy there are two main conditions that can occur one is uh, pregnant mothers are more vulnerable to um, periodontal disease due to their hormonal changes the periodont integrity of the periodontium um can get affected so um they are more vulnerable they might get more gingival bleeding on that so they during the pregnancy you need lot of periodontal care so it's better to attend to a dental faculty a dental facility and get some advice from a dental surgeon regarding your gum and if there's any gum bleeding or thing you should attend immediately this is mainly due to hormonal changes during pregnancy number two is uh, pregnant mothers are mainly vulnerable to dental erosion particularly due to gastric regurgitation in the in the first stages of uh, pregnancy and also um, due to all these they have uh, diet changes they tend to take i mean they, they tend to eat more acidic food like pickle and all that to all the i mean to, to uh, overcome all these um, i mean uh, nauseated situations and all that so um, other than that there are few lesions like pregnancy epulis and all i mean not very common now main two conditions during pre pregnancy you should attend these um, uh, the periodontal disease and then uh, i mean to prevent your teeth from uh, from uh, uh, dental erosion due to acid and then keep your i mean uh, caries levels uh, free caries level uh, zero and treat all the untreated um, caries lesions fill them and uh, maintain good oral hygiene so that um, uh, proper oral uh, condition i mean dental disease free child is ensured uh, thank you for clarifying the queries of the audience sir. and uh, there are some more questions in the chat box and we are running short of time the rest of the questions will be uh, answered by sir uh, like we will we will be sending the answers to you and uh, for now we'll come to the conclusion of the session our sincere thanks to Dr. Nilanth Ratnayaka, Consultant in Community Dentistry, Provincial Directorate of Health Services, Western Province, for his excellent lecture and precious time. And I would like to thank the audience to participate in this webinar. And uh, you can find the link in the chat box. Kindly give your feedback to us and answer the post-assessment questions to receive your e-certificate for participation. We hope you had a productive session today and we invite you again to next week for another interactive and timely topic in our Sri webinar series. Once again, thank you very much, sir, to share your knowledge with us. Thank you.